Hello and welcome to the first video on Boolean logic and Boolean expressions. You might know this topic in an alternative name because the same topic sometimes also referred to as digital logic or Boolean algebra or algebra of proposition. What this topic is looking at is looking at a collection of input values, a collection of operators that sometimes we refer to as logic gates and looking at what happens at the end. What is a particular set of, of these inputs and operators? What kind of outputs you can end up with? Now, the original part of this coming from that at the very, very beginning, the computer has been built up from logic circuits, tiny, tiny little circuits. And then depending on which circuits you connected together, you were able to tell the computer to do different things. So the input and output values can be recorded in a number of different ways again. There are two common ways. One is the true false setup and the other one is the one zero setup. Again, it comes from the fact that logic circuits can be turned on or off. True and one is equal to the on position and false and zero are equal to the off position. Remember circuits, turn it on or turn it off. So let's look at what are the basic Boolean operations. The first Boolean operation is the end operation. Now this end operation sometimes just written out as end in capital letters, sometimes is referred to as this symbol and sometimes it's referred to as a multiplication symbol, symbol because it works like ordinary multiplication within the binary system. Now it also has got in digital logic, if you're looking at the circuits themselves, if you're looking at how to build boards together, uh, it has got a logic gate symbol and that logic gate symbol is this one. Now this tells you that this end gate can take a minimum of two input values and it will give you always one output value. So what does the end gate do? Now the end gate is actually working as if you had a water pipe fixed with two taps on it, one after the other. So when will water flow through? Now the water will flow through only if both of the taps are open. If I turn this tap off, the water will stop here. If I turn this tap on, but I leave this tap off, the water will stop here. So water still doesn't flow through. And obviously if I have both taps turned off, the water doesn't go further than here. So the water will only go through if all of these taps are on. So water can go through only this way. Now how can we sort of summarize this information in, in a nice and uh, simple visual format? That's why truth tables has been invented. Truth tables are simple tables which tells you what are the input values, what are the possible input values that can come, what is the logic gate or what is the Boolean operation that we use here and then what will be the end result of that Boolean operation for every possible income combinations. Now let's look at the simple examples. Let's see how does the P and Q operation works. P is an input, Q is a different input. What happens if I combine them together? What will be the common output? So P and Q and here will be my output. Now what kind of setups can the two taps have? Well I can turn both of them on I can turn one of them on, the other one off, all in the other combination, or I can have both of them turned off. So what did we say? The water can only go through if both of the taps are on. Every other combination will stop the water from flowing. So this is the truth table accompanying the end operation. With these Boolean truth tables, you need to know them, you need to understand them because later on we'll be combining more than just one single operation together and see what happens if we start to mix them up. So this was the first one, 
the AND operation. Let's have a look at the next one, which is the OR operator. Now, the symbol for the OR operator can be this small little way, the opposite, the turned up side of the end, or the addition because it works like the addition. And if you are coming from the engineering background, you can see either this symbol or this symbol for the OR gate. Again, it takes in at least two incoming values and gives you one outgoing value. So at least two inputs, one output. You can think about the OR gate as water pipes, but fixed now in a different way. Now these water pipes are fixed together in a parallel fashion. And on each branch we have got a tap. So what happens in this case? Now if I turn this tap off, stop the water flowing here, but I don't turn this tap off, the water will be able to bypass that turned side and flow, flow through here. The same the other way around. And obviously if both of the taps are open, then the water have got a choice of flowing through one or the other. So the OR operation opposite to what the end does, it only stops the water in one case. It stops the water if both of the ten taps are turned off. So what does it look like in the truth table fashion? So again, P or Q, what are the possible income combinations and what are the possible outcome combinations of these? So again, I can have two values, two input values, P, Q, so again, what are the different input combinations for these two values, the P and Q? A quick trick, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. This fact comes from, I've got two input values, P or Q, but all both of them can be true or false. So I only have got two possible uh, switch stands. So 2 to the power of 2 gives me 4, but 2 is the number of input values and 2 is the number of possible outcomes like trues or fours. So what did we establish? If both of the taps are turned on, then the water can flow through. If one of the taps are turned on, then the water can flow through that branch and bypass the off tap. But if both of the taps are turned off, then the water is stopped. So that's when this, this uh, operation is forced. So the next operation that I would like to talk about is the NOT operation, which sometimes also used this symbol, sometimes this symbol, and sometimes it used just by a bar over the input. The pictorial symbol for the NOT gate for engineers is this. It's a little triangle with a little circle at the end. Now, compared with the others, the NOT operation only have got one input and has got one output. Okay? So that straight away tells you something. So if I have got just one input, then that input P can only be true or false. And the NOT P but what is not true? What is not true is false. And what is not false is true. So the NOT operation has got a very special role. It flips, it inverts, it changes the input to its opposite. The next simple operation is the XOR, which has got this symbol. So it doesn't have that many symbols as the NOT, so that's uh, easier. And the XOR's pictorial symbol uh, for drawing as a circuit is the OR gate, but with an extra leg added to it. So it can take again at least two inputs. Or if we use the alternative way of the XOR, then it would look something like that.
Okay, now, this is called the XOR operation because it's exclusive OR. So it's exclusively one OR the other input. So the exclusive OR, the XOR operation, filters out the input values when the inputs are the same. So what do I mean by that? If I have got inputs P and Q, what will the X or do to them? So again, P can be true, true, false, false, and Q is true, false, true, false. So, exclusive or. If the inputs are the same, which is this case, because both of them are true, the XOR gate gives you a false signal. Basically, the XOR gate stops the signal going through. If one is true, the other one is false, then that's when the signal can go through. And again, because false and false is the same input value, that the XOR gate stops your signal going through. And remember that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these are based on the electric circuits. And then you wanted to manipulate at the very, very early stages, early stages of co uh, computing. You wanted to ma manipulate where the electrical signal goes. Does it go through here? Does it go through there? You wanted to manipulate and filter out certain inputs in favor of other inputs. So these different gates give you that kind of option of turning them around, saying, I don't want this input. I want that, that input combination to go through and nothing else. There are a couple of more operations that I would like to talk about. These are slightly more complicated. I can't really give you any nice and simple example of why they work in here. We just have to learn that this is the way that they work. So one of them is the if then. And the symbol for that is this forward arrow. So again, I've got inputs P and Q. And then what would be the out output? of the P if then Q operation. So true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now, sometimes this also called the implies. So true implies true, that is true. But true cannot imply false. So this one is false. False can imply true. And false can imply false. That's true again. This is probably going to be the most difficult gate to understand why this works. You just have to learn the truth tables. And once you know the truth tables, you can apply it to any kind of combinations. And the last operation that I would like to talk about is the if and only if. And the symbol for that is an arrow that goes both ways. So if I have got the two inputs again, P and Q, the P if and only Q will work this way. True, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. This one is only true if both inputs are the same. So true and true are the same, so this will be true. True and false are different, so the output will be false, same for the third row. And false and false are the same, so this is true in here. Now if you look at this one, and if you remember the XOR, you can spot that these two operations, if and only if, and the XOR are doing exactly the opposite. In this, using this operation, I can filter out the same input values and stop the different input values. So that's again a very useful uh, operation to have. This short video was intended to expose you to the basics of the Boolean logic or digital logic and show you how the truth tables can be built up and what are the most commonly used operations. To be able to follow up on digital logic you will need to be able to know these by heart. So these are different operations that every time you need to apply them, you will be, have to be very, very conf 
confident knowing these operations, how they work, what they do, what kind of inputs they let through and what, what kind of inputs they stop from going through. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is all coming from the basic principles that when the first humans started to invent the computers, they built them together from very tiny basic circuits.